Hello everyone, welcome to or welcome back to my channel. My name is Georgia. Today I thought we would go through my June reads. Now, June has been such a good reading month. Like I actually got quite a lot of books read. I think I'm on seven books. There are still two days left this month, so you never know, I might squeeze an eighth one in there, but as it stands at the minute, I have read seven books this month. And the books that I have read, I have really enjoyed all of them, except for one that I wasn't too bothered about. Um, but apart from that one, the rest have been great. Let's talk about my June reads, as always. So my first read in June was actually a reread. The first book that I read was Verity. Now this was on my TBR for this month. I did actually read all the books that were on my TBR, so I'm very proud of myself. I actually stuck to it for once. So the first book I read was Verity by Colleen Hoover. Now I've read this years ago, like two or three years ago, and it was the book that got me into reading and I did rate it five stars back then. I was really intrigued to read this again and see if it's still sat at a five star for me. So this is one that also has the additional chapter in it. So if you don't know anything about this book, it's like a mystery thriller. There's a, a romance in there. It's a really messed up book when you actually sit and read it properly. We've got some unreliable narrators. We've got like two possible outcomes. So I try not to give you any spoilers, but there's basically a manuscript and a letter and you kind of have to make your own decision on which one you believe to be true. I was always team manuscript. I just always thought there's no way somebody can write that about their own kids and it not be true. And also, if it was just like a, a writing exercise, then why would you not just go, oh, just in case, like, I just want to make this really clear, this was just a writing exercise, this isn't actually what happened, in case it was ever found. I just think it's a bit sus. So I was always team manuscript until reading the additional chapter in this book. And that's just kind of, confirmed for me how messed up the narrators are and now I'm kind of like yeah maybe team letter but yeah the additional chapter in this book has definitely changed my opinion on <laughs> what side of the argument I'm on I still really enjoyed this book but I don't think it's like I don't think it's a five star for me anymore I had rated it as four on Goodreads but I do think it's probably still like a 4.5 but I don't know if it's like, if that's like a nostalgia thing though. I do think, I do think I'm going to rate it 4.5 because I do still really enjoy the story. I'm still really invested in it. I love how messed up it is. But yeah, so I think I'm going to go with 4.5 for this book now. I did still really enjoy it and I do re really like the story and the characters. If you've not read much about the book, you should definitely read it. I do still really enjoy it, but it has gone down from a 5 to a 4.5 for me. So the next book that I read in June was The Teacher by Frieda McFadden. Now I don't have my copy of it right now because I've actually lent it to Molly. Molly's just read it. It's another like mystery thriller type. Um, it's got some really good twists and turns. The storyline is really interesting. Um, there's a lot of like cheating and affairs and things like that going on. Um, and I think that's the reason I didn't really enjoy this book. I mean, I still... I, it's not that hmm, it's not that I didn't enjoy it okay I did enjoy the book and I did find myself invested in it and I did want to know what happened and how like it all played out it was just weird like all the the people involved are either students or teachers and it's just it's all really strange and it just doesn't sit right with me but it's really bad because if it was a smutty book I'd probably have loved it but in this mystery thriller context I just I don't know it was just strange but the the actual story itself and all the twists and the turns were really interesting and I did still find myself wanting to know what happened. It's really hard to explain mystery thrillers without like ruining them for you. But basically there's a main character Addie and a main couple. Oh I ain't got it with me so it's like testing me here. I want to call it Eve and Nathan I think. So Eve and Nathan are married, they're both teachers and Addie is a, te is a student at the school they work at. Addie's already been sort of mixed up in something with a teacher before and it's got that teacher sacked so Eve automatically has this weird thing about her and around her of just like she's not to be trusted, stay away from that one sort of vibe. Nathan seems to take a bit of a liking to her and wants to help her and all that kind of thing. It all kind of gets like really twisted from there. So all the way through the book I was a bit like meh. Not really bothered, not really bothered. But then the ending of the book has such a good like twist and turn and like it all gets really strange and a bit gruesome. Like literally the last couple of like chapters, there's this really big like reveal on who one of the characters is and it's just like, oh my God, this has literally gone full circle. It's gone full three th full 360, full circle. Do we just sit there for a minute after like, huh? <laughs> hmm? In the end of it all, I did rate this book three stars, so like I said, I did enjoy it and the ending did really make it for me. If the ending wasn't as like mind-boggling as it was, I, I, it would have probably been about two, but the ending did really sort of fix it for me, so yeah. 
My overall rating for The Teacher was three stars. It, it was a good book. It wasn't my favourite. It didn't match up to things like Never Lie for me. Never Lie was, is the only other Freedom of Adam book I've actually read so far. So it didn't quite meet the same standards in my eyes, but I did still enjoy it. So. so if you've seen the video from a couple of weeks back, I did the 24 hour reading challenge and within that I read three romance books. So the next three books I do talk about in depth in that video and there's sort of like my live reactions to it and all that kind of thing. I will link it up here for you. I did read three books in that time and they were all really good books but I will very quickly give you a little bit of information about them and the ratings that I gave them but if you want my true sort of like reactions to them and a lot more information on like what I felt about the book so you can go watch that video for the in-depth breakdown. So the first book I read was Done and Dusted by Lila Sage and I really really enjoyed this book. It's part of the Rebel Blue Ranch series that she's doing. I think there's three out or there's two out and the third one's coming out soon. So this is the first one and this follows our main characters Emmy and Luke and it's like a brother's best friend country romance. I just love it. It's a bit of like a... it's not an enemies to lovers but they they never really got on very much when they were a bit younger and then she's moved away and come back and then since coming back they've really got on. So it's not an enemies to lovers but it's like a I didn't really like you very much too but I'm obsessed and I love you now. Yeah there's a lot of talk about like mental health and things like that in this book that I really enjoyed and it's very spicy. It is a very spicy book. I very much enjoyed the spice in this one. So I've rated this book 4.5 stars. I honestly enjoyed it so much and I just I don't know why it's not pushed over for five for me. It was very close to being a five. Very very close to being a five. I enjoyed this so much. It's so cute. So I definitely recommend this one. Go read it. Moving on to the fourth read of June. I read Yours Truly by Abby Jimenez. Now this is the first book of hers I have ever read and I only actually found out a few days ago that this is part of like a interconnected standalone type series um, called Part of Your World. Now I am annoyed now because this is book two. Now I'm gonna have to go and get Part of Your World and just for the summer because that's apparently either side of this book. I absolutely loved this book. This book was so good. It was so good. So it's like a workplace romance, it's a fake dating, it's a I need a date to a wedding. All great tropes. I'd never read fake dating until this book and Honestly, it's now a trope that I really enjoy. I have found a new trope. I have found a new author. I really enjoyed this book. There is also letters, which I am obsessed with. I loved the post-its. I loved the communication that way. I just thought it was so personal and so cute. So as you can see, like, this is the normal font and then the font changes where they've been writing on letters. So he writes her a letter um, and then they sort of respond back and forth on these letters. There's a lot of talk around mental health in this book, but I really enjoyed it because it's actually from the male's perspective. I've never seen the mental health from a male side in a book. It's always the woman who's really shy and insecure and anxious and the guy who's always like really outgoing. Whereas in this, our main character Brianna is very much the outgoing, very confident lady and Jacob is very much the shy anxious guy. I loved this book like their relationship is so sweet and how she helps him with his mental health and how she hel he helps her deal with her brother and her brother's illness like it's all just so cute. I honestly adored this book and I will be reading it again so when I get the others I will probably reread this one because it was so good and because I was reading it as part of the 24 hour reading challenge by the time I got to this it was getting late, I'd already been reading for like quite a lot of hours straight and my ADHD was just like, mm, mm. I do feel like I need to read this again to have like the full effect of it. But this was still a five star read for me and that's the first time I've ever rated just a romance five stars. It's usually just like fantasy romances that get high ratings like that from me. It's also not actually very spicy. Um, there's only really one scene and the rest of it's like closed door sort of situation. It's just, it's so good. It's so bloody good. You need to read it. Abby Hibbenez, yours truly, five stars. So the next book I read in June was The Love Wager by Lynn Painter. This is again in my 24 hour reading challenge. Um, and it is another fake dating for a wedding book. It's all about like dating sites and things like that as well. So it's a very sort of modern twist. It's a bit of like a younger character to kind of set into the one before. Um, I was a bit nervous going into this one just because of how much I enjoyed yours truly. I was like, oh, I feel a bit mean going straight to another wedding fake dating situation because I just feel like it's never going to compare but I did still really enjoy this book. So this follows our main characters Jack and Hallie. But Hallie has recently got out of a relationship with her boyfriend and she's waitressing at a wedding. So Jack comes up to the bar and is chatting to the bartender Hallie and his girlfriend doesn't like that and kicks off and they kind of break things off there and then 
there's then a one night stand they both go their separate ways Hallie comes across Jack on a dating app and like messages him like oh it's you sort of thing and it all just kind of spirals from there so they agree to be each other's wingman for like dates and things they're going on these dates separately but at the same place so when it all goes wrong that they can just go to like get tacos and have a chat after and they become really good friends and then she ends up basically taking him to her sister's destination wedding they end up dating for her sister's wedding and then kind of realize that there is more than just friendship here but it's such a cute book i wasn't a massive fan at first but again i think that's more just me comparing it to yours truly and it just felt a bit younger and i was just a bit like it's fine it's fine but then as i got into the book i really sort of like getting to know the characters more and i just really enjoyed it so i did give this book four stars it's funny their banter's really good um abby jimenez and lynn painter both write such good banter like the banter between the characters is just such fun and like, it's just so nice to read as well but i really really enjoyed this book so yeah solid four stars did really enjoy it and the last one in my 24 hour reading challenge as well turns out the love wager as well is also part two of like an interconnected standalone series for mr wrong number so again i'm now gonna have to read that one as well because i apparently don't check these things when i just buy these books and don't check if they're part of a series i just get them and then read them and then find out after and get stressed the sixth book I read in June was Fourth Wing by Rebecca Yaros. I have finally done it. I have finally joined in. I have finally... I've, I've just... I've done it. I have done it. Um, so this is the first book. The second book is already out and is... There. There. And then the third one comes out in January next year. Yeah, if you haven't read this and you are very much delayed like I am, do it. I was putting it off for the longest time because I was like... It's just been so hyped up now. It's just, it's not going to live up to the hype. It did. It 100% did. I enjoyed this so much. It's about our main character, Violet. She's training to be a dragon rider. So the dragons, like, choose the, the person they want to bond with. So they basically have to do all these, like, things to be able to be, to go forward to bond with the dragons. And then the dragons choose their rider. Um, and it's all very drama filled. Um, there are two love interests in this book and the whole romance surrounding these two characters is so good and so like tense and spicy and the scenes in this book also are tremendous. I really 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 enjoyed this book. I have rated it five stars so we've had two five stars this month which brings me a lot of joy. It's just so good. I enjoyed it so much. So I will definitely be jumping into Iron Flame relatively soon. Um, not straight away just because I know the next one doesn't come out till January and waiting that sort of time just doesn't settle very well with me. So I'm going to give it a little bit, give it a few months and then there'll only be a few months again for the third one. This book was honestly so, so good. It's tense, it's spicy. The dragons are so good. I love like, I love the characters in this book and the friendships and the relationships. I love like the school element of it. I just love it. It's so good. It is honestly so good and it is, it just, it lives up to the hype. I enjoyed it so much and I will be reading it again probably at some point as well. So you never know, I might even wait quite a few months and then read this and then I inflame and then I can jump into Onyx Storm when that comes out in January. It's not too heavy, heavy on the fantasy either, like it's easy enough to follow because I sometimes struggle if there's like really heavy fantasy in a book. So basically when you bond with the dragon you get power from them. There's quite a few magical elements to it and obviously there's dragons and the dragons do talk to their riders like internally, not they don't talk but they can talk into your mind but it's not too hard to get your head around either and they're basically prepping for a war and then fighting in this war and it's all it's just so good it's so good you need to read it you need to read it this is definitely up there in top three of books this year it might even be top this might even be my best read this year so far and then the last book i read in june was actually on my kindle i read come back to me by emily catlow it always feels really weird when I don't have a physical book because I don't know what to do with my hands. So Come Back to Me is part two in the Ripper's MC series. So Straight to Me I read in May. Was it May? It was. So I read the first one back in May um, and then jumped into the second one this month and the third one comes out in August. But yeah, it's like a motorbike gang series. In the first one we have like all the drama and the getting to know each other and everything. And then at the end there's... This big news and then that all gets kind of carried forward into this book on how it's all dealt with and how it all goes on there's a lot that goes on across the two books and like it's really hard to explain the second book without ruining the first but you just need to read it like, it's a romance book they're very spicy 
Um, it's made by a gang, so as you can imagine, there's going to be some dark stuff in there and a lot of fighting and a lot of action. But there's a lot of really good twists in the second book that I didn't see come in. There's a couple of characters that are either in or brought back in that I really enjoyed like revisiting or meeting. And they yeah they have sort of set up the third one, I think, as well. And it's like some of the, two of the characters in particular, I think, are going to be our main focus in book three, which I'm super excited for because I love him. I love his character and I'm really looking forward to seeing sort of where he, where that goes for him. Like I am obsessed with his character. So the fact that he's going to get forward, go forward and have like more of a say in this book, I really like. Um, so the first book was only dual POV, whereas this one has multiple POVs. So we get a lot more information from a lot more characters in this book, which I did also enjoy. Um, I do usually prefer just dual POV because I sometimes get a bit confused when we've got like five or six people's opinions going on. But there's only like three or four in here. It's like really easy to follow and you don't get too confused on who it is that you're actually speaking to like halfway through a chapter. But yeah, it's just a really sweet book, this one. There's some really like homely moments. There's some really cute moments in there. So again, we're following Dean and Madison. It's like their relationship gets a lot of strain in this book, especially through the beginning and the middle. Like there's a lot going on that they're having to try and work through and like work around when there's all this other stuff going on in the background. Like it's, it's just really interesting. And there's a lot of like secrets and a lot of like him trying to protect her but her being like stop trying to protect me because you're making it worse like they have a lot of struggle in this book um, and it's really nice to sort of see how they pull through that and how they move on like they really are like soulmates in this book and it's just i'm obsessed yeah there is a lot and i mean like a lot of spice in this book so if you're not a fan of spice you might not like it but for those of you that are obsessed with spice read this series because the spice is just So they're the seven books that I read in June. It has been a really, really, really good reading month. Like I've definitely enjoyed the books I've read this month, minus maybe the teacher that wasn't my favourite. There's definitely some new authors in there that I'm going to be reading more from going forward, like Lila Sage, I love her writing, Rebecca Yaros, her writing is really nice. Abby Jimenez, I'll definitely be reading more by her. Like I've read a lot of new authors and really enjoyed their stuff, so I will definitely be reading. It's it's going to become more expensive because now I've got loads of books that I want to buy because I'm really enjoying reading them and really enjoying their writing style so if you've not seen my July TBR video I have already uploaded that so that will be up here if you want to watch that just so you've got an idea of what I'll be reading going forward into the next month but I'm really really hoping for another good reading month because the books this month have been so good I've enjoyed them so much if you enjoyed this video don't forget to like comment subscribe all that fun stuff and as always my social medias and things will be in the description box below yeah I really hope you're doing well and I hope you enjoy this video and I'll see you next week bye Thank you.